Welcome, Pastor. Good morning, Mrs. Alving. As you see, I've kept my promise. And punctual as ever. Well, believe me, it's not easy getting away. All these blessed committees and boards I have to sit on. Which makes it all the kinder of you to come so promptly. Now, perhaps we can settle our business before lunch. But where's your suitcase? I've left my things down at the store. I'll be staying there tonight. And we honestly can't persuade you to spend the night here. Not even this time? No, no, Mrs. Alving. Thanks all the same. I'll stay down there as usual. It's handy for getting the steamer back. Ah, oh, well, please yourself. But I really should have thought two old fogies like us. Oh, goodness me, you will have your little joke, won't you? Anyway, of course, you're feeling particularly happy today. There's tomorrow's celebrations for a start, and then you have Oswald at home, too. Yes, fancy that. Isn't it wonderful? It's more than two years since he was home last... And he's promised to stay the whole winter. Has he indeed? That's good of him. He's a dutiful son. I dare say it must be very different living in Rome or Paris with all those attractions. Ah, yes, but he has his mother here, you see. Bless the dear boy. There's still a corner in his heart for his mother. Yes, it would be a sad thing if leaving home and taking up art and such like were to deaden his natural feelings. It certainly would, but there's no fear of that with him. Indeed, no. Anyway, I'll be interested to see whether you recognise him again. He'll be coming down later. He's just having a little rest upstairs on the sofa. Now, do sit down, my dear pastor. Thank you. You're sure it's not inconvenient? <laughs> of course not. Fine. Now, let's see. Well, uh, first of all, we have the... Mrs Alving, mm? tell me, what are these books doing here? These books? They're mine. I'm reading them. Well, do you read this sort of thing? Yes, of course I do. And do you feel any better or happier for reading books like this? I think I'm more confident, somehow. That's remarkable. In what way? Well, they seem to explain and confirm a lot of things I've been puzzling over myself. What I find strange, Pastor Manders, is that there's really nothing new in these books, there's nothing in them but what most people already believe. It's just that most people either don't give any thought to these things or else won't admit it. Good heavens, do you seriously believe that most people... Yes, I do, absolutely. Not in this country, surely, not here. Yes, of course, here. Well, really, I must say... Anyway, what exactly do you object to in these books? Object to? <laughs> Well, you don't think I spend my time studying productions of this sort, do you? So, in fact, you've no idea what it is you're condemning? I've read sufficient about these writings to disapprove of them. Yes, but your own opinion? My dear lady, there are many occasions in life when one must rely on other people's judgment. That's the way of the world, and a good thing too. How else would society survive? Hmm. Yes, you may be right. Of course, I don't deny that these sort of writings have a certain appeal. And I don't hold it against you that you want to keep up with the intellectual trends which I'm told are current in the wider world where you've allowed your son to roam free these past years, but... Um, but? Well, one doesn't talk about such things, Mrs Alving. One isn't bound to account to all and sundry for what one reads and thinks in the privacy of one's own room. No. Of course not, I quite agree. I mean, think of your responsibilities towards the new orphanage, which you decided to found at a time when your opinions on intellectual matters were rather different from what they are now, at least as far as I can tell. Well, yes, I grant you that. Anyway, speaking of the orphanage... It's the orphanage we should be discussing, yes. However, discretion, dear lady. Now, let's get down to business. You see these? The deeds? All of them. The complete set. It wasn't easy assembling them all in time, as you can imagine. I had to put a lot of pressure on people. The authorities are painfully conscientious when it comes to making decisions. Anyway, we've got them. This is the deed of conveyance for that part of the Rosenwald estate known as the Solvik Farmstead, together with the buildings newly erected thereon, school, schoolhouse and chapel. And this is the legal sanction for the bequest and the statutes of the foundation. If you'd care to have a look, statutes of the Captain Alving Memorial Children's Home. So, 
There it is. I chose Captain rather than Chamberlain. Captain looks less pretentious. Yes, yes, whatever you think. And this is the bank book showing the capital sum deposited, the interest from which will be earmarked for the running costs of the orphanage. Thank you. Actually, if you'd be so kind as to hold on to them for convenience... With pleasure. I think we'll leave the money with the bank for the time being. The interest isn't all that attractive, 4% at six months' notice. However, we might find a decent mortgage investment at some point. Of course, it would have to be a first mortgage and absolutely sound, in which case we might reconsider. Yes, of course, dear Pastor Manders, you know best. Anyway, I'll keep my eyes open. There's just one other thing I've been meaning to ask you. And what's that? Well, are the orphanage buildings to be insured? Yes, of course, they must be insured. Ah, now, just a minute, Mrs Alving. Let's take a closer look at this. I keep everything insured. Buildings, contents, crops, livestock. Well, obviously, yes. On your own property, I do the same, of course. But this... But this is quite a different matter, you see. The orphanage is to be consecrated, as it were, to a higher purpose. Yes, but even so... I mean, as far as I'm concerned, personally, I don't see anything in the least offensive about securing ourselves against all eventualities. No, absolutely not. But... How will that go down with the local people? What will their reaction be? You'll know better than I. Hmm, their reaction. Is there any considerable body of opinion here? Opinion of some weight, that is, that might take exception to it? What exactly do you mean by opinion of some weight? Well, I'm thinking mainly of people of independent means, people in positions of influence, such as make it difficult not to attach a certain weight to their opinions. Oh, well, there are quite a few, I dare say, who might take exception if... Well, there you are, you see. We have a great many people like that in town. People in the other churches, for example, the other denominations. They might interpret that as meaning that neither you nor I had sufficient trust in divine providence. But as far as you yourself are concerned, my dear pastor, you know perfectly well... I know, I know, my conscience is clear, that's true. Even so, we might not be able to stop people from misrepresenting our action. And that might very easily have a damaging effect on the work of the orphanage itself. Well, if that's going to be the case... And I can't entirely overlook the difficult, indeed I may say painful, position I might be placed in. This orphanage has been a frequent topic of conversation among influential circles in the town. Of course, in one respect, it's intended to be an asset to the town, and people are hoping it will make a substantial reduction in the poor rate. But... Since I've been acting as your advisor, looking after the business side of things, I do fear the more fanatical types would make me their first target. Well, you certainly don't want to risk that. Not to mention the attacks that would undoubtedly be launched against me in certain newspapers and periodicals which... Say no more, dear Pastor Manders. That settles it. Then you won't be insuring it? No. We'll leave it as it is. <sighs> But supposing there was an accident, I mean, you never know. Would you be able to cover the damage? No, I can tell you now, I absolutely would not. Well, you must realise, Mrs Alving, this is a very grave responsibility we're assuming. But there's nothing else we can do, is there? No, that's just it, there isn't. We mustn't leave ourselves open to misrepresentation, and we mustn't, under any circumstances, offend public opinion. Not you, at any rate, a clergyman. And, you know, really, I think we have to assume that an enterprise of this sort will have luck on its side. Indeed, that it will enjoy special protection. Let's hope so, Pastor Manders. So, uh, shall we leave it at that? Yes, definitely. Good. Just as you wish. So, uh, no insurance. Actually, it's odd you should happen to mention this today. Well, I kept meaning to ask you about it. You know, we almost had a fire down there yesterday. What? Well, it was nothing much, really. Some shavings caught fire in the carpenter's shop. Where Engstrand works? Yes, he's a bit careless with matches, so they say. Well, he's got a lot on his mind, that fellow. All manner of distractions. From what I hear, though, he's making a genuine effort to keep to the straight and narrow, thank God. Really? Who told you that? Well, he did. He assured me personally, and he's a good worker. Yes, when he's sober. Ah, yes, his regrettable weakness... Actually, he's often forced to give in to it because of his bad legs, so he tells me. The last time he was in town, I was really quite touched. He came to see me, 
and thanked me most sincerely for getting him a job here so he could be near Regine. Well, he doesn't see that much of her. Oh, yes, he talks with her every day. He told me so himself. Mm, possibly. He feels he needs someone by his side. Someone who can keep him in check when temptation strikes. That's what's so endearing about Jacob Engstrand. The way he comes to one like a helpless child, so ready to accuse himself and admit his frailties. The last time he called in to see me... Look, Mrs. Alving, supposing he did desperately need Regine back home with him. Regine? You mustn't stand in their way. Indeed I will, most certainly. Anyway... Regine has a position here at the orphanage. Don't forget, he is her father. Yes, and I know best what sort of a father. No, 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 she's not going back to him, not if I can help it. My dear Mrs Alving, you mustn't get so excited. Really is a pity the way you misjudge poor Engstrand. It's almost as if you were frightened. Never mind that. The point is, I've taken Regine into my house and that's where she'll remain. Shh! Enough now. Dear Pastor Manders, don't say any more. Listen, Oswald's coming downstairs. Let's just think about him now. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were in the study. Good morning, Pastor. Well, that's truly remarkable. Now, Pastor Manders, what do you think of him, eh? I think... I think... Can that really be... Indeed it is, Pastor. The prodigal son. Oh, my dear young friend. Well, the returning son, at any rate. Oswald's thinking of the time you were so dead set against him becoming an artist. Yes, well, many a step seems hazardous at the time to mortal eyes, but turns out... Anyway, welcome. Welcome home, my dear Oswald. I may call you Oswald, mayn't I? What else would you call me? <laughs> Splendid. Actually, what I wanted to say, my dear Oswald, is that you mustn't think I condemn the artistic profession as such. I dare say there are a great many, even in those circumstances, who can manage to keep the inner man free from corruption. Let's hope so. Well, I know one who's kept both his inner and outer man uncorrupted. Take a good look at him, Pastor Manders. Mother, dear, please. Oh, no doubt of it. Nobody can deny that. And you've begun to make a name for yourself, I see. You're often mentioned in the newspapers and in the most complimentary terms. I will say, though, things seem to have gone a little quiet recently. I haven't done much painting this while back. Even an artist needs to rest now and again. I can well imagine. Yes, he needs to prepare himself, muster up his strength for some great work. Yes. Mother, will lunch be ready soon? In about half an hour. He's still got a good appetite, thank heaven. And a taste for tobacco, too. I found Father's pipe upstairs in the bedroom. Ah, so that explains it. Explains what? When Oswald was standing in the doorway there with that pipe in his mouth, it was his father all over again, large as life. Really? Oh, how can you say that? Oswald takes after me. Yes, but there's something about the corners of his mouth, something about his lips that exactly recalls Captain Alving, at any rate, when he's smoking. Not at all. If anything, Oswald has more of a clergyman's mouth, I'd say. Yes, yes, I suppose so. A good many of my colleagues have the same expression. Put that pipe away now, my dear. I don't like smoking here. Yes, of course. I just wanted to try it. I smoked once when I was a child. You did? Yes. I was quite small at the time, and I remember going up to Father's room one evening, when he was in a good mood. Ah, oh, you can't remember anything from those days. Yes, I can. I remember quite clearly. He sat me on his knee and let me smoke his pipe. Go on, lad, he said. Have a good puff. And I puffed with all my might, uh, till I felt myself going quite pale and great beads of sweat stood out on my forehead. And then he roared with laughter. That's most peculiar. <laughs> That's just something Oswald has dreamed. No, Mother, that was no dream. You must remember, surely. You came in and carried me off to the nursery. Then I was sick and I could see you were crying.